Many sports leagues have a hall of fame in which the best competitors are honored and remembered. Hebrews 11 is sometimes known as the hall of faith as it details and lists people from the Old Testament who are remembered not for their athletic abilities or any winning record, but for their faith in God. Readers are therefore encouraged to imitate the faith of these faithful men and women of the past. As we have talked about the last two weeks, the people the book of Hebrews was written to were likely mostly Jews who had professed a faith in Jesus, but were struggling in persecution and were wanting to return to the old system of sacrifices and the old way of doing things. But we know there's no going back to this past way. There's no salvation offered in these old sacrificial sacraments. Only in Jesus is there salvation. The Old Testament, the Old Covenant, it all points to him. He is the fulfillment of it all. And as much as the examples found in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11 are an encouragement, they really showcase the absolute reliability and the power of God. He is the faithful one. It's his power and might on display. He uses and equips average people to do great things, forgiving their failings and strengthening their faith in him for his purposes. And so we too can continue in faith for him. The author begins by defining faith and then he mentions the faith of Abel and then Enoch and then Noah. In Hebrews 11, seven, it says Noah constructed an ark. Even though there had never before been rain, he was preparing for events yet unseen. Faith acts, God acts. Next, the faith of the patriarchs is detailed, starting with Abraham, who in verse 10, looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. God builds, he builds our faith. After this, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph are all mentioned, followed by Moses, the people crossing the Red Sea, those who circled Jeru uh, Jericho, excuse me, as commanded, and then the faith of Rahab is mentioned. But do you notice what isn't being mentioned? When Abraham questioned, when Sarah laughed in unbelief, when the people continually and constantly grumbled in the wilderness. These people, like all of us, are sinners, and yet God in his mercy forgives our sin. Earlier in Hebrews it said, For I will be merciful towards their inequities, and I will remember their sins no more. While these men and women aren't perfect, they show the forgiveness, the perfection, the power, and the plan of God. The reading for this week starts at the end of the Hall of Faith, which continues to show God's might, equipping flawed individuals to accomplish his purposes. See, God makes strength from our weakness. God makes death into life. Then Hebrews 11, 36 to 38, turns from celebrating victories to acknowledging pain and persecution, describing how others suffered mocking and floggings, even chains and imprisonment. See, a life lived in faith doesn't guarantee ease. In fact, it promises the opposite. In this world, you will have trouble, remember? But Jesus has overcome the world. He provided a way for us. He ripped the veil separating us from God. He made a pardon for our sin. He endured the cross and all that shame and punishment for us. So chapter 12 begins, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run the race with endurance, the race that is set before us. See, we can't run if we're entangled. Running is so much harder when we're weighed down with sin, which can so easily ensnare and cling to us. Yet through him, with him we can run with endurance the race that is set before us, knowing that there are costs, yet knowing his perfect peace, knowing his victory, knowing who we are in him and empowered by his strength and spirit. This race probably doesn't look like a straight dash or a sprint, but an obstacle course. Endurance is needed to run this race, determination, consistent steady action, which refuses to be diverted or defeated. The Old Testament reading for this week is from Daniel, who showed great conviction, determination, and faith in a place which promoted pagan practices and attempted to persuade and indoctrinate all away from following the true and living God. Daniel was likely an early teen when he was taken to Babylon and he never returned home. 
And though he lived in wicked Babylon, he never let it live in him. Throughout his life, Daniel attributed all of his abilities and successes to God and continued his practice to praise, pray, and prioritize him. Running his race with endurance, looking to God, God strengthened him. He enlightened him. He sanctified him. God used Daniel's continual devotion to showcase God's own power and might to unbelievers. Just as we see the faithfulness and power of God in the examples of those mentioned in Hebrews 11, we can see it in the story of Daniel and in Paul, who in Acts 20:24 20, describes himself as a runner with nothing keeping him from finishing his race with joy. My only aim, he wrote, is to finish my course and the ministry I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify the good news of the grace of God. Paul had a race to run, as did Daniel, as do we all, a race which involves effort and commitment, a race which may be run in hard circumstances and challenging places, though he is there with us. It is a race which can be run with joy as we look at Jesus. Chapter 12, verses two through three. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that is set before us endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. How do we not grow weary or faint-hearted? How do we run this race with joy? We look to Jesus. In the ancient Greek, the idea of looking to him meant looking away from everything else, throwing off everything else. Jesus is our sole focus. He is our soul's focus. He is our inspiration and our example, our light and our life, our strength and our hope, our joy and our salvation. He is the author, the founder, and the creator of your faith. And he is the finisher of it too. For he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. He is the faithful one. Jesus made the way, finished the race, paid our painful sins cost debt, and is now seated at this place of highest authority and honor. He finished this for us. We look to him not only as our example, but as the source of our strength, the author of our faith, faith the destination of our run, the light of our life, our Lord and Savior. We pray for others as they run this race. And I pray for you that you run well with him, friends, with his joy and in his strength. I will see you soon.